Amazing to be here. I wish I was coming here to just hang, but we got issues. Luis has a cat named Pip. OK. Um, and he has a lot of challenges. He's not your average cat. Pip was born into my hand. I took his mom off the streets, and she was very, very sick. So he uh, had little brain damage because she was sick. So he ended up with this condition, cerebellar hypoplasia. Cerebellar hypoplasia, also known as CH, is a, a problem in the cerebellum, which is the part of the brain that controls movement and coordination. There's no cure. There's no medication for cerebellar hypoplasia. It is what it is. They got to kind of live with it. A one-eyed CH cat. That's, yes. that's interesting. Well, I have this other cat named Red. Somebody was getting rid of him, so I took him on with the intention of actually rehoming him. And here we are a couple of years later, and I still have him. And Pip hates him. He'll fly at Red. He positions himself so that he can pounce on him. And Red's terrified of him. Seeing how Pip is with Red kind of scares me to go near Pip. I, I couldn't believe that a special needs cat to this degree, missing an eye and also having CH, could even get to Red, let alone cause damage. But yet, Tara is terrified of said special needs cat. We got a lot of problems to work through here. Pip. Hi. Hi, buddy. Oh, my gosh, you're adorable. Mommy's little baby. You're adorable, even when you hiss. Hey, Mush. What I just saw in terms of your physicality with with uh, with Pip is right back to Bottle Baby. Right? Oh yeah. It's a little troublesome in this context because what we have to be looking out for is the victim here, mm. uh, and in this case, he's not the victim. I'm completely conflicted because everything in you wants to sympathize with the CH cat. And on this side, I'm saying, well, wait, wait a minute. He's also making this other cat feel like he doesn't have a home. He's forcing him away from the only territory that he knows. He's a bully. Tara, do you see the hissing a lot? Yeah. So I just try to avoid him. Well. So I just walk in from the door and straight to my room. OK, so he immediately splays. That's his thing, right? Yes. Literally, oh, hello, my buddy. I'm watching Pip struggle, not just to walk, but hell, just to get up. And I couldn't stop thinking I'm surrounded by wood floors. What are we thinking about here? It astounds me that he can get after Red. This CH cat, this special needs cat, stalks and attacks Red. I just didn't believe it. Down comes Red. I got to see these cats together. OK. Good boy. Good boy. It shocked me to think of this cat being tortured by a cat that can't even get around. But then, I saw it. Oh my god. What happened there? Red doesn't recognize Pip as a cat in terms of his movements. Red goes, what are you saying? What are you saying? Are you threatening? Do you want food? What is it that you want? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Red is trying to read Pip, and he can't. So let me give you some homework. What I want to start working on is the shelves, so that basically Red can go from upstairs uh -huh. to down here, and then sit up in the vertical world and watch Pip's body language. For Pip, on the floors in here, just experiment with different type of textures. Let's have shag. Let's have the yoga mat type of substance. I asked them to really start building up the floor for Pip because he was slipping around like crazy. He was insecure. And special needs cats don't know they're different. We have to let him stand on his own four feet, gain self-confidence, and walk through the world with pride. Ben, I'm able to feed him now. Whoa, I, that's I just amazing. don't feel comfortable yet picking him up. Tara is really starting to get over this fear she had of Pip. I just try to avoid him. Well. So I just walk in from the door and straight to my room. And that is really important because at the end of the day, what I really want is to keep Tara in this house with Louise. The next thing we're going to do, get up, okay. start looking around this place. And really, let's start right here, up to Redland. Now, the reason why I had you build all this mm -hmm. was partially so that Red could look down and watch Pip as if, as if he was watching TV. Because with CH, a cat moves in very unpredictable ways. Now that he's within the same space but separate, he's beginning to feel more confident around him. Now that we've uh, looked up high, let's look down low. 
Now, he's not getting snagged on any of this? No. Mm -mm. This one is loops. So we came up with the idea of putting little toys in there that he plays with. I love this, right? At this moment, he's not a special needs cat. He's hunting like any other cat hunts. We've seen Red up top, and we've seen Pip down low enjoying their life. And, and that's amazing. But at the same time, there's got to be some things that indicate that we're only halfway through this process. And sure enough, as we move towards the kitchen, that's where the challenges start to emerge. Red went to go get some water, and Pip automatically it was like, hey, what are you doing down here? This is my territory. Pip went after Red like he normally would, but this time, Red had somewhere else to go. And Luis had a little mini terrarium on the dining room table with a butterfly, which was not here the last time I was here. He didn't even reference Pip, even though they just had a fight. He was just like, hey, butterfly. Yeah. And off he goes, right? So let me give you some homework. We're going to start working towards the collision of the two worlds, but in a peaceful way. Start looking at places about two and a half, three feet off the ground, just like that table by the staircase and start looking about how he can get around the world low. Tara, we want to see you really still take Pip in. Pip's playground gets brought into your room, ending in one more rug that's in your room with the toys in it, because again, that is a brilliant idea. So I walk into Louise and Tara's place, and let me tell you something. I see cats in the middle of the room, both Pip and Red. It makes me nervous, because the last time I was here, I was still seeing some fighting in this house. Well, well, well. Uh, hello, Mr. Red. Just walking around the floor. Yeah, oh, that's pretty remarkable. When you consider that the first time I came here, you basically couldn't put these two cats on the floor together without mayhem breaking out. Now none of that's happening? Really remarkable. How much fighting are we having right now? I'm not getting woken up in the middle of the night to fights. I haven't <laughs> at all. <laughs> there you go. I haven't at all. Pip has been going into my room on his own accord, and now, like, just being able to be on his level, that is so have cool. him feel comfortable with me is just incredible. I've never bonded with a cat like that before. I think I'm definitely going to be staying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Congratulations. I'm so, so thankful. thankful. <laughs> For Jackson, I mean, to me, it's opened up a whole, like, just a new kind of way of living here. Let's get up. I got to see stuff. Let's do this. Come on. <laughs> Now, this terrarium, I got to tell you, above and beyond. Now, the last time I was here as part of their homework, I had Louise and Tara build a bigger terrarium, bringing the outside inside. We have Australian tree frogs. <laughs> oh, my god. Can you see them? <laughs> At night, when these little guys come alive and start jumping all over the place and eating their crickets, he is riveted. Part of why Red is so comfortable at home is that we've given him every reason to stay. And I looked out and there's Pip playing in his playground, feeling secure. These guys didn't just do their homework. They really went to town on every task I had them do. And the result is we have peace between these two cats. We have a confident Red. We have a Pip who's not acting out. That's what you get when you do your homework.